My name is Victoria Silvas, and uh, today I would like to speak about landscape level regeneration through practical actions in Zimbabwe. Um, I just try to start. Um, <clears throat> my project is mainly based on, um, my, my, my project I'm mainly involved is uh, through Manbende Orphan Care Trust. Um, but this presentation a bit in, includes other uh, communities, uh, mainly in Zimbabwe and uh, <clears throat> outside of Zimbabwe as well. Uh, we have met online first a year ago to um, uh, cryptocurrency platform called Seeds. And um, we formed um, a circle called Zimbabwean Circle um, and trying to push uh, regenerative action in through our organizations. But some other countries like Kenya, um, Uganda and Burundi, some organizations from these countries also joined us um, and we are uh, having weekly meetings and trying to uh, work together to move forward with mainly on educational um, areas, but it is tailored to regenerative agriculture mainly. So here are two examples about um, the project uh, I, we are connected to. Here uh, is a Kenyan project uh, through M20 community organ uh, permaculture. Uh, where they are including youth and uh, uh, women in maintaining the community garden and the products that they are um, producing is shared uh, in the local community for the vulnerable people. Oh, sorry. Um, and below, uh, this is a bit different because it is a refugee camp in Uganda. And uh, they are also using permaculture, but uh, at the moment they are uh, trying to organize um, a group of ladies who will be trained to install and maintain uh, solar PVs. And they will get an additional um, income from, uh, from this uh, installation and kind of gaining the skills of uh, solar uh, construction and uh, maintenance. Most of the projects involved in uh, in that Zimbabwean circle are kind of very new or at the beginning of their establishment. Uh, the one I'm involved in, uh, the Mang van der Erfen Trust, had been established in 2015. But uh, their main focus was initially feeding uh, children in um, primary schools. But after two years of very dry uh, year, um, they decided they have to look for um, different ways of supporting the community. And that's how they moved towards uh, permaculture. So basically, my project is uh, near Harare, around two and a half hours south. And uh, it is on a semi-arid region of Zimbabwe. Here in the small, uh, smaller pictures, there are two plots uh, where we are working on at the moment. This one had an addition of a river um, that we can use, but it is far from all the amenities. Uh, the other one has better infrastructural um, connections. Here you can see just uh, some live pictures about um, how dry the area is. They try to use uh, keyhole farming, which, which means they are putting um, compost manure in, into holes and they are making the they are planting into holes so when it is uh, raining, the rain can stay on slightly longer and penetrate slower, uh, slower into, um, into the plants or seeds. And here is uh, someone trying to dig a well, which is again quite um, hard work. Um, we recently 
uh, managed to dug a borehole and it was like 110 meters deep until they found the water eventually. Um, <clears throat> one of the actions we have been uh, taken to uh, lessen our uh, impact of climate is uh, water retention. Um, our organization and uh, the organizations here in general are trying to focus on more than one aspect on uh, climate mitigation. So that includes um, water retention, training, social and economic um, consideration of, of the local area. So um, we think a holistic thinking is more effective than just uh, focusing on one issue. Here is a water tank uh, that uh, had been built last year, uh, able to hold around 50,000 liters of water. And um, it is mainly pumping the water from the river I have shown here around. So it, it is, they are able to use it uh, for irrigation in the dry season as well. Um, they have started to dig spheres, um, which are um, aiming to retain the, the rainwater for a longer period of time after, after the rainy season or, or any rain. And since they are in the beginning, you only see a few trees here, but the um, aim is to plant um, trees on the bank of the sphere. So that's again um, for water retention and also um, the trees will have uh, access for water for longer period of time. <clears throat> Here um, they're planting seeds again um, in small decor buckets and uh, plastic bottles. And they are collecting the rainwater from the uh, roof runoff. So that's again some way of conserving the water and uh, using for their advantage. <clears throat> there are a few solar projects that we have done so far on our area. So the first one uh, had been installed to pump the water from the river onto that 50,000 liter water tank. And we have used the solar pump for, uh, for it. It had been um, a diesel, diesel pump, diesel um, run um, pump before, but um, we managed to convince Evans, the founder of the Mangwande Orphan Care Trust, um, to switch it to more uh, sustainable way of um, confusing pumps. And he managed to purchase this solar pump. And that's a very recent project. Um, after we, they have drilled the borehole, uh, they installed, uh, I think it is a 20,000 liter water tank, again, uh, using the solar pump here to pump the water up. And um, this is mainly for drinking water and for cooking and um, clean, cleaning. Um, so the trees again, and um, here, this is a very recent project. Um, they are, they have planted around 3,000 seeds, um, mainly Kenyan croton, but also uh, lemon and mango, to name a few. And they are hoping to increase the number, I think around, well, at least 10,000, but they, they are aiming for 50,000 at the moment. Uh, and they are hoping to sell it for the cryptocurrency, uh, what I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, which uh, is a more, more stable um, money as their, their uh, Zimbabwean um, currency at the moment, and hopefully for the long term. Um, you can see here they're trying to do some mulching around trees for, um, again, for water uh, retention and to save the trees from uh, drying. They are also trying to in involve uh, youth in, in the project and, and they can learn different skills, including um, 
crafting and pruning. And uh, this two picture shows uh, the beginning of um, fruit forest, where they are trying to mimic um, forest basically with the different um, height of trees, and um, they would be they will be edible um, fruit trees. So that's also kind of uh, good for soil um, maintaining the soil and. Um, also creates a good microclimate uh, as well as access for uh, food for uh, the people and also for uh, the animals. Here are uh, some examples of the traditional buildings and um, they don't to use natural materials as far as possible. Uh, you can see some various methods of building a uh, hut. They do um, hand molded bricks. This building is made of that. This is just about be, to be completed, I think, this week and uh, with traditional touching. And education is a big part of uh, the project, including ours, as well as uh, training the local children, the local community. Uh, the people from the trust and the local communities also attending other courses to uh, increase their knowledge. Here they are um, at the Savory Institute learning about holistic grazing. So that's about um, my project in Mangba um, de Orphan Care Trust. And I would like to um, tell a few words about uh, the Soviet Alliance. Unfortunately, Laurie is not here at the moment. Uh, she couldn't manage to come. Um, they have a more established project as the Mangban de Orphan Care Trust. And um, I think they started probably around the same year, 2015, but they, they went straight into permaculture by um, the Mang Van der Trust just started it around 19, 2019. And they also building uh, spheres using uh, gabions for, for water retention. They also uh, train people to build those really nice um, water jars, I think they call them. So they can collect water from rooftops and can use it for irrigation or washing or other similar things. Um, you can see here they have um, wildlife uh, elephants and lions, and both of them are a big issue for them. Um, in the later pictures, you will see um, bee heaps they have built in to keep. Um, the elephants away, they use it as a fence. And um, lions are kept away using bombas. If I can move, okay, uh, sorry, it will be in a later slide here. So they are fenced off, um, the animals are fenced off, and the lions can see the um, cows, so they are not going to attack it. But uh, those bombers have a secondary uh, reason. They keep uh, the livestock in one place and uh, they will do their work with manure and with their um, food. Um, they work on the ground, on the soil, which makes it more productive. So this lady, um, has the products produced before um, the animals were on her um, area. And you can see the difference on the right hand side after um, the other year um, when the cows left the area and she was producing in the same area uh, with all the manure and um, the legwork the animals put in. Um, 
that's their uh, screenshot um, about those boomers. So this is the area that they have started the projects on. And you can see it. Um, I'm not sure uh, what is the time, time frame, but I think it's probably two or three years, uh, the difference when the animals um, had been uh, through the land, through managed grazing. So this is also something um, which saves a lot of water and um, gives a much higher yield um, than on traditional base of farming. Um, here is the um, bee fence I mentioned, and um, also some pictures of the community education. Uh, they are trying to come up with projects where um, the community can be involved. Uh, like uh, I mentioned here, the um, water tank, but they also um, teach uh, sewing skills and uh, carpentry skills and plumbing, but they can give uh, onto the community. So I think that's a uh, more or less. Oh yeah, I, I forget to mention the rocket stove story, which is also uh, it is very visible on my screen. So they are um, um, producing also rocket stoves, and they are doing the education uh, on how to use them. Um, this is um, also decrease the amount of trees needed to chop down. Um, for cooking because it is much higher efficiency as the tra traditional um, cooking option, which is usually open um, open source heating. And also it is less uh, smoky, so it is a healthier option for, um, for doing their uh, daily cooking um, and water boiling activities. I think that's a, a presentation. Um, and if you have any questions, please write in the chat as Adam uh, recommended. Um, here are our um, email addresses and web links. Thank you for listening. And I would like to pass it to Joe.